Hi everybody. In today's video, we're going to be building a complete Blazor site. The name of the site is kadapi.com, which is short for code copy, as you can see. The reason I am building this site is, let's say I wake up one morning very motivated and I'm going to update the documentation on one of my GitHub repos, which doesn't happen very, happen very often. So I come over here, I copy some code in Visual Studio, go over to my GitHub repo, I'm all ready to, whoops, wrong project, this one, I'm all ready to paste in my code in edit mode, and I paste it, and look at the way it formats. So. I can either sit here and go like this and you know hit uh, backspace or whatever delete about you know 200 times or I can show you this site that I've already built so I'll show you also the reason why I'm building this video today let me minimize everything today I woke up and I have 40,000 downloads of data juggler .blazor .components, which by tomorrow it should pass up both of these are within 11 it just so happens but I expect this will pass up the file upload by tomorrow probably okay but I have never made a video for this project and it's gonna be my most popular NuGet package so I thought I would make a short video and by speaking of short we're gonna try to build this in one hour but before we I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and I'll show you what we're building. I've already built one copy of this, so we'll just run it, but we're going to try to build it all again, hopefully. Okay, so you have this little drop down here. For now, it says C Sharp and Python, but for now it's just C Sharp. <clears throat> It'll probably be Python and JavaScript and others later, maybe. But for now, and I'll paste in this source code that's on my clipboard, and if I hit the arrow key, to scroll way up here you can see it's the same formatting problem I hit format and the code is all formatted you can kind of as it scrolls down it's you know some of that doesn't fit I could make this a little wider but anyway and then the only thing it does here is you copy this to your clipboard and that uses blazor JS bridge which we're gonna copy from this project to save writing it by hand and the little I do have a few images like this image the check mark you just saw this background and this button so that's I, I created those just to save us a little bit of time so we're gonna go ahead and get started closing this down closing down this version of the Kadop I'm gonna minimize this because we're gonna need it and now we are going to start our countdown timer right now so I've got this as a little I'll put it over here so you can see it that should stay topmost while we're working here so now we are going to create a new blazer project I'm going to shut down this demo project I don't need it at the moment and we're going to open a new Visual Studio project I am going to create a new project if you don't have blazer server app in your recent list like I do just type in blazer and it should come right up so I'll do either one same thing and now I'm gonna call this uh, Kadapi what's the name of the site and also and that other one I put is Kadapi.old that I just showed you the demo so that way I could create two alright and we'll go ahead and hit next it's gonna be .NET 7 we don't need authentication at this point and we'll go ahead and create our project now the first thing we're gonna to have to do is delete some of the weather and some of the other boring stuff that, like the survey that I wish they didn't do I know there's supposed to be some new templates but I don't know how to run them yet so okay and what we're going to do now is go to program.c sharp we're gonna delete the weather reference and we're going to delete the weather singleton and now we are going to just show you if we run it there's nothing here It'd be just a plain old have the oh we got some more errors uh, weather forecast service where is that well I've already gotten okay and we'll delete all this stuff this says weather that's even we don't even need this entire page so hang on we're gonna get rid of the counter page and the fetch data page so I'll just blow that they do for examples for some reason okay and we're gonna get rid of the survey here and the survey here and we're gonna go to host oh, we'll, we'll need that here in a second but let's see main layout 
So we're going to get rid of this little top part for about. And we're going to get rid of, oops, this little sidebar here with the nav menu. We don't even need the nav menu. Just getting it down to a very simple project. And now if we clean it, build, should build now. Okay, everything builds. Now the first thing we're going to do, and this will just save me getting frustrated while we're working. Oops, wrong part. Go to properties, and we're going to disable nullable because they have this new thing that they don't want you to, they think we don't know how to check for nullable, which is kind of stupid, I think, but we're going to disable that because otherwise if you create anything, you got to be able to put a question mark next to it. It's just retarded that they think that we need that. That's another story. Moving on. All right. So what we need to do now is add a NuGet reference. And we are going to go to the Browse tab. I have a, uh, a an issue with Microsoft. If I asked them when there's no NuGet packages installed, why start on the Installed tab? They always do that, but nobody has uploaded that yet because nobody sees those. But we're going to add datajuggler.blazor.components. We're going to install it. I accept Microsoft gets my third born. Okay, and now we have to do a few things. Let me make sure everything builds, we're all good. Okay, we're gonna go to the README for this project. I'm gonna close this one down for now because we don't need it. Yes. Alright, and we are going to go to the very top of this and this project has a, a dependency on Blazor style because some of the components use it if you use the combo box for now. There might be others. So we're going to copy this to our clipboard. Come over here to program.c sharp. Okay, that's the old one. I'm going to close it for now because I'll get confused having two open. And in program.c sharp, I'm going to paste this and we're going to have to move what I just played. We don't need this, but we do need this. And we'll move that up. And now we have Blazor style registered. So we can use it if we need it, and we will later in this video. All right, so now, OK. And then the other thing we're going to need from this is the CSS reference right here. This is datajuggler.blazor.components.css. It's very useful. So the link I'll put in the video description to this project, and you should look at it. It's got a lot of use. If you ever need to just move stuff in CSS, instead of having to go create a class, you can just say, like, left 16 or up 12, margin left 8, things like that. just makes it kind of easy, for me at least. And going to our project in the host, dot cs html i'm going to paste this link right there okay and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to register our blazor javascript and to save time because i copied this code from one of my other projects so it'll make this video go a lot faster so i went ahead and i'm going to go to uh, projects GitHub. Okay, here's my Kadapi.old. I'm going to copy this content directory and I'm going to go to our new. I'm going to refresh this page because that'll put. Where is our new Kadapi? There it is. Okay. So now we've got the content there that so we can uh, reference it. We're also going to need to create an images folder while we're here. And I am going to copy the four images from my temp folder because I thought it would be easier than uh, creating images or trying to do that during while I'm making a video. It takes a long time. So these four, not the clock. Okay, we'll copy that. It's not showing up here, but it shows up here. 
images. All right, so we've got our four images. And the only other thing we're going to copy from the other project is a little bit of CSS because I didn't want to write that while you're watching me. You'd get bored, I'm sure. So opening up the old project that I said I no longer needed. I could have just copied the uh, CSS folder, but there's not too much in here. So it's the black button, the logo, and the uh, background, and the little check mark. So we'll take this from this project, and we'll go down here to the project of the same name, site.css and paste. So now we've got that. So that should, if we run it right now, give us the background, I hope. Okay, on this I forget every single time. A few things I got to do there, but one, they want to run this little console app every time unless you change this from HTTPS, like I just did twice in a row, to IIS Express, so I forget that every time I create a new project. And that's the old one, IIS Express. Okay, so now if we run this, and we gotta get rid of the hello world on this page, cause that, and we're gonna call this Kadapi Home. And we'll get rid of that. Okay. Now, you, okay. So that gives us our background, and then we need to put our logo. So that's just going to be real simple. We'll just say div class equals logo. Okay. And if we run this, we should be. Sorry, my dog is snoring in the background, but I'm not going to wake him up. Okay, I may go put him on the bed here in a minute if he keeps making weird noises. Okay, so everything's going great. Now what we're going to do is actually add our code. So make everything start working. So hopefully this goes faster than 50 minutes this time. So now what we're going to do is go back to our little uh, page here because I've got some examples. Let me go down to the combo box, which is way at the bottom because the combo box is the newest one. I kind of just do these in order. And we're going to copy this to our clipboard for the combo box. So now, if we add our combo box, it's not going to do anything yet. Now you're going to notice that we have to say datajuggler.blazer.components. Okay, and a few more things we need to do. For this theme num, we have to add using, can't type, data juggler.blazer.components.enumerations. That takes care of this, and then we need system.drawing.color. Or just drawing. That'll add, give us color. Okay. So now, if we run this, we should get a combo box, and you'll notice the parent this is not set, and we're going to do that next. But what that is, is we need to implement the iBlazer component parent interface. But to do that, we need a page. So we're going to create a page, which is just a C Sharp class. We're going to call this index.razor.c sharp. So it becomes nested. Now, you, because those have the same name, we have to add partial modifier there. All right. And now we're going to use this Visual Studio extension of mine. And if you want it, I'll put the link in the description. And I'm going to just format this class. It just forces me to write a description and it does some other things. I'll show you as we go along. Okay, so this class is the main page for this app. And what we want to do is we're going to add some using statements. I could use global usings, but this is a simple project, so we'll just do this here. Using datajuggler.blazer.components, using datajuggler.blazer.components.interfaces. And we'll probably need enumerations 
also maybe. Okay, so now we're going to put iBlazer component parent. We're going to get a little squiggly line because we don't have this implemented. So right click, quick actions and refactoring, implement interface. And that will put a bunch of messy stuff here. So what we're going to first do is private list iBlazer component children. And now we're going to get rid of this and we'll create the properties here in a second. And then now what we need is a methods region. Okay. And for that, we're going to format selection right there. And this is going to, what we're going to say is return component helper, which is part of data juggler .blazer .components. find child by name and we're gonna put uh, children which doesn't exist yet it's okay we'll go ahead and do this we gotta skip one step ahead number region and I have to tab back because Microsoft hates regions now otherwise if I don't the formatting is all messed up but you get the hang of it after about seven years of them not caring so now we can create our property for children and then we're going to select that and say create has property so now we don't have to say children not equal to null we can just do this okay and we can now finish our method here and say children if I can spell comma name and that'll return the child name. It's really not needed for this app, but I just, the interface requires this method, so that's why I wrote it. That little helper. Okay, next is receive data. We'll just format that selection. We're going to use this, but we'll do it a little later on when the combo box changes selection, but that's a little bit ahead. Okay, now refresh format selection, and notice these methods are in alphabetical order, not that any, the computer doesn't care, but to me, it's easy to find in, for large projects. All right, we're going to go back to our class here, and we have a refresh method. There we go. You can copy this to your clipboard, or you can just take this part. It's all we need. Okay. And that just forces the UI to update and then register and we're going to use that and I'll show you how in a second okay so now we are at ready to if we go back to our combo box you'll notice parent equals this no longer has a squiggly line because we implement the interface so when this com com combo box is created it calls to the index page and says hi combo box register me so to do that, we're going to store an instance of the combo box. And to be lack of creative, we're just going to call this combo box. And I'm going to say create property and select that and create has property. So that gives me a lot of code real quick. All right. So now in the register method, if we're going to add one using statement, we haven't added yet data juggler dot ultimate helper it comes with this project and every project of mine almost so here we're going to say if null helper dot exist component and I'm going to turn on auto comments here and hit control shift and it types that for me and if you want to know how to do that let me know and I'll make another video for that all right, so next what we want to do is if component is combo box, uh, combo box equals component as combo box. So register the combo box. And here I'll just put if this is a combo box. All right, now. The next one, I'll go ahead and run this and show you there's more to it we need to do, but for now, we'll just run it and show you our combo box. And it's going to have nothing, it won't have any uh, items yet, but we have a combo box, 
and there's nothing in it and the button text is not set. So to do that, we are going to, let me go back to our page, go behind, in the register method, we need to add a reference really quick. We're going to say using data juggler .ultimate helper enumerations, and now we can say combo box .load items type of, there's a few other ways of doing this, but the way we're going to do it is with an enumeration. So it's going to be uh, code, or it's going to be language in them. So what I called it. <coughs> load the items and now we need to select and we want to right now this only works for c-sharp so we're going to select c-sharp combo box that sets selected item and it's going to just be by text and it's c-sharp select c-sharp by default so now if we run this Okay, so we have C sharp loaded. Now, you'll see that right there where the list box has a little gap there that we don't want. We're going to go fix that. So I'll show you how real quick. So to fix that, go back to our little combo box. List item top. We're going to put negative one. And the unit for that is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I believe that is in vertical heights. There's a unit setting for here it is height unit vertical height. So that's just like a percentage of height. So by negative one is one percent up. So that should be okay. Okay, that's not enough. Let's try that one more time. I just took this out because the example had negative two point four but it was going all the way up to the top. Why is that not working? That is another issue. Hang on. Hmm, okay. This didn't happen earlier or in the other project. Um, kinda not really sure why, but we're gonna go on for now. And I'll show you how the one thing we do need to do though, just to pretend like we have multiple languages, is oh, our refresh method is not, uh, we never, I'm sorry, I never put that code there. I got distracted. Okay, so there's our refresh code. All right. I'm kind of baffled why it now decides to mess up the. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna like just try one more time before I give up on this. I just want to see what that does. Okay, maybe it's pixels. <clears throat> I forget, you know, sometimes. So, all right, so we're gonna have C sharp selected, but you can also select Python. Wow, that did not work. Okay, I'll tell you why that didn't work because we need to handle that method I said we were going to write here in a second. So first thing we want to do is create a variable here called language enum. <coughs> That's just going to be the selected language. Okay. And what you can do, well, that's fine. We don't need to do a has language because C sharp is our default. All right. So Where's the received data? Here we go. Oh, that's what I did. I pasted that in the wrong place. That's why that was missing a minute ago. Okay. If no helper dot exist message. If message dot sender dot name equals combo box. Control, I think we're gonna go verify. Yeah, right there. Okay. 
for now. This is the only control sending messages, <clears throat> but it's just a way to get messages from the parent to the child and back and forth. All right, so we're going to say, and also we want to say combo box. Combo box dot set selected item, and it's going to be message dot sender dot te uh, I think it's just no, not sender message dot text. There we go. Okay, set the selected item. I don't really know why I'm having to do that because I normally don't. But we're going to see if that solves it. Okay. I think I'm supposed to do that in the control, but for now that works. And then what we need to also do there is set the language. So if message.text equals Python. Language equals language num dot python set to python and we'll put else since it defaults language equals language num dot c sharp okay so we have our language set so we can use this when we actually do the code formatting which is also part of data juggler dot blazer dot ultimate helper there's a code helper that I added to this to make this video go way faster okay so now if we are ready to let me uh, put our validation components on which is what we need to do now so to get the validation component we're going to just search this page for validation component we're going to copy this and we're gonna, just from making this video once before, if I put a break between this, this does a better job of uh, formatting. And the, oops. Oh, I just erased our clipboard. Okay. And that's not formatting very well, so tabbing that back. And we're gonna paste one more of these because we want the, this is going to be the source the unformatted code and the caption is going to be source just the label text and that one is correct already because that example came from this project okay and we're going to run this and see what this looks like I have a feeling I'm going to need to push these combo these boxes down but or I did last time. Okay, I was correct. Okay, the other problem is this box is behind this, which is a uh, simple fix. So what we can do, A, we're going to push that down further, and to do that, there is a top. And this is also in, uh, that's in pixels, the height unit, Height unit is vertical height, so that is going to be in a, in a percentages of height. So we're going to just move this down about 12, I think is what we need. All right, so now if we run these, and we can also set a Z index if needed, but we shouldn't have to now. Okay, I'm going to do two things. One, you may not see it yet, but our labels are here. We just have a uh, black text on a black background. So that doesn't work. So we're going to fix that. And I'm going to move our combo box itself. Our combo box is a little high. So we're going to move it from button top. I don't think there's just a top. Okay, so it's button top. And instead of negative 2.8, we're going to make that just a zero and see what that is. Hopefully that doesn't... There is actually a top, though. Yeah. So we'll put top at zero. 
I don't know what the button. You can actually make the button separate from the controls, what I think that's for. Okay, so our combo box. Okay, so we gotta move our list item code back. This list item code that we added, that's why I had to put that to zero. And I think we'll be good there. Okay. All right, combo box is set. So now we're gonna fix the label color. And we're doing pretty good on time. We're almost to the button click stuff, so we should be wrapped up here in about 12 minutes, I'm hoping, but maybe more. All right, so what we want to do is label color. And we don't have that here, so we will add label color, and we're going to make that lemon chiffon. And I'm going to copy this to here. Oops. I hate formatting that changes things, but that's another story. Okay, so we have our labels. Now we don't have a label there, you'll notice, but we do. We just don't have it showing. So what we want is label color. Color dot uh, lemon chiffon. And label There's a uh, label class name. But let's just see what that shows up, or if it shows up. Okay, so select is not there. And this is where this that CSS class that I told you about comes in handy. So what we need to do is fix that. Now there's a few things we can do. We can set, but we're going to just uh, set a label class name. And we're going to say down 20 and we're going to say right 20 because you can use multiple classes with CSS. And let's just run that. I forgot what value I used. If we need to, we can go look at the other project. That's okay. I went a little too far to the right. So I'm going to make that like about right uh, 16. That's about right. So, okay, good enough for prime time. So we have our combo box set up. We have our two components. We need to register these, uh, the source and the results validation component. So we're gonna do that now. So go to the code. And we're going to, I'll put it right here. Validation component source control, which is kind of like GitHub, but not really. <clears throat> Sounds like it though. And results control. I'm going to use regionizer and create both of those at once. I'm going to say create has property. And I'm going to say for the source control, create has property. Okay. And just make sure that builds before I register them. It does. Now we're going to go to our register method. Else if component is validation component. Here we have two with the same uh, type, so we have to go by name. If text helper dot is equal. And that's part of data juggler ultimate helper uh, and this is going to be uh, component dot name comma source control if the source control source control equals component as validation component register the source control okay else if I could just say else but we're gonna go ahead and just be all uh, in case there were more someday <clears throat> component dot name results control ah that's a new bug Visual Studio started doing recently 
that they did for seven years and it quit for a month and they brought it back I guess they realized they fixed it and it didn't want me happy but now we're just gonna say register the results there all right and now what we want to say is results okay so now we have our c controls registered so now I'm just gonna run it make sure everything still looks right and we're gonna add our buttons and actually make something happen okay everything still looks good now we're going to add some our buttons so to do that it's just a real simple uh, the first one is just going to be here at the bottom of this I'll put a uh, another one of these just to kind of give it its own little space and we'll just say uh, button class equals black button that we copied in earlier and then now at on click equals copy and we need to write that method so to write that method we're going to do that now go to regionizer add method but I want it to be a void so I'm going to go to event and then back to method it's a short little trick and name is copy and we have our method copy so now in our copy method what we want to do is this is where we need uh, I have to copy one more thing from the other project because we copied in the contact content for this JavaScript but there's a C sharp class that goes with that so going to the old version and this is just to make this video go way faster because otherwise if you watch me try to find stuff from other projects be all over the place so in our old Kadapi which is somewhere okay why am I not seeing Kadapi that old there it is okay that alphabetical stuff that I'm having trouble with as I get tired okay here it is blazer JS bridge so we're gonna copy this and we're going to go to Kadapi New. And we're just going to paste that. And it should have our everything we need. So, but we're going to briefly come look at this just to go. This is the new one. We're going to go look at the old one. And we'll just grab that method. Of the working one I mean and this is kind of cheating I know but I'm sorry I'm starting to get tired so if I don't grab this right I'll mess it up okay so what we want to do is make sure we have our results control and we've got to create a timer which I'll do that here in a second but I'll just copy this over some of this has to be fixed now you'll notice this timer is going to give you a thing telling you that um, it's it's thinking this is part of system.threading.timer but to fix that we're going to use system.timer which to me is I call it a, a, a it's simple which is what we want so we're going to copy this to our real project and we'll just add a using statement that we want to use whenever you say timer system.timer so and you'll notice we don't we need to make this an async method so we can do a wait JS runtime that's the other thing we're gonna grab real quickly from the old one which if I go over here to the index page we just need to inject this and I'll go ahead and copy that blazer styled with it because we're gonna need that in one more second so in about five minutes okay so now we've got that injected so okay we need to create well two things we need to create a timer so let's do this timer 
create properties and we'll just say create this property. Okay. So now we'll just use like a type. So that's gonna be timers. There. Okay, and that needs to be the same thing here. Yep, yeah, computers are so picky. Okay, so we have our timer set. Now we need to create our timer elapsed. And to do that, you just say uh, hit space, hit elapsed, I mean hit uh, equals, and equals, and then it'll tell you, okay, timer.elapsed equals. This is the first time it ever doesn't want to show me this. Timer.elapsed equals plus or equals. There we go. Okay. Plus or equals. Hit tab. There. Do what it tells you. Yes. All right. Timer elapsed, except for we're going to rename that. To, we don't need an underscore. There. All right. Now, if I try to do this, this is going to end up becoming an event, I think. Format selection, the events region doesn't exist. All right. So, that's so what we want to do for that. And that is having formatting issues, but we'll not talk about that. All right. So, to set, we're getting close here. We're almost done. So, we want to add an events region events. Now we format our code. Where's that code I just had? <sighs> okay, let's put the events region back. I'll just go create that again. Sorry, I always start messing up towards the end of these long videos. Alright, so now what we want is, here's our time relapsed. Format selection, there. And now we need to fix this formatting. Okay, and now check visibility. We need a string, and I'll show you why in just a minute. This is the blazer style part. Check visibility. Regionizer, create properties. So now we are going to just first to get faster, go over here to the index page. And I don't have it. That's oh, a new one. Go to the old one. Sorry. That's why it's not here. We are going to copy this and paste it right here. Okay. And that gives us. Now you'll notice we don't have check mark class name. So we need to go set this. I swear. Regions worked great from 2001 to 2013 and they broke them when Roslyn compiler came out. But that's a whole nother story. Private string. And that's going to be lowercase. And Blazor will tell you they like auto property, but personally I don't, so. All right, check mark class name. So now, we come over here. That works now. And notice this check visibility. So what we need to do when the checkbox is showing, and we'll get to that in just a second, but for now, um, we should have enough to run our button and see. Let me just run it and see what it looks like with our... Oh, I realized what I didn't do. I didn't give my button any text. Computers do what you tell it. I added a button, and that is going to be format. Oh, okay. We're going to move this button. This button goes here. We'll just do that. I guess I could do those there. It didn't really matter.
Okay, so now we've got our copy button. What we need is a format button. It's gonna look very similar. On click equals format. And this is gonna be format. And you'll notice we don't have a format method, so we're gonna add one. All right, so if we run this, we should have our buttons, but they don't do anything yet. Okay, so we're back to the way the app should look, which is the hard part to me anyway. The code part is usually pretty easy. So now we need to add our format button. We're going to do that first, so that's pretty easy. Let me close this down. The format method, we are going to say if has source control, control shift, string formatted text. Oh, we need both controls here. And has results control, string formatted text equals code helper dot format code string code text and that's going to be source control dot text and this is just going to be language which is we already have that set from the combo box or when it's set by default should be c-sharp I could also just set it to c-sharp but at this point it wouldn't make any difference get the formatted text and now we're going to say results control dot text equals formatted text. Oh, and this is where Blazor is not going to like you setting a property of text outside of the component, so we're going to have to say set text value. Hang on. Set text value. And to run that, let's get our code from our demo project I had opened earlier. All right, so just copy all this. Control C to copy. And now if we run it. I paste in our code and if you use the arrow key you can go up here to the top and you'll see the code is not formatted click the format button and it's all formatted so now all we need to do is copy and we're done so that shouldn't be too hard so to do the actual copying we need to first uh, I'm gonna cheat again and go to the old project just because I am getting tired and I'm sorry to cheat, but okay, so we have our formatted code. We're gonna have to start some of this, but I'll show you as we go along. Okay. Oh, wrong project. Need to get over to the new one. I've got too many things. This is the new one. Okay, we've already pasted this in here. Okay, that was what it was. Okay, but all we're doing is we get the formatted code, and this is using the Blazor.js bridge to copy to the clipboard. And then we set the check visibility to visible and refresh. But to set the check visibility, we need to put our checkbox on. So we're going to come down here. And right here, image class. Actually, I can just do a div. It doesn't really matter. But I'll use an image. Uh, well, let me see what I did here. Go into the index page. It was just a div. Okay. God, I didn't keep going with that. I'd have been like, why isn't this working? Okay. And you'll notice what that is. <coughs> Excuse me. That's check mark, check mark class name. And that's the name of this blazor styled CSS class and that gets injected into the you know the same as the same as writing style and putting all these properties but it's a lot cleaner to do it this way and 
tech visibility goes from hidden to there. And then the one other thing this does is this goes to timer.elapsed. So what we need to do, the final thing, this is needs to go to, um, we're going to dispose the timer. So timer.dispose, destroy. And then we're going to change check visibility equals hidden. So that'll hide the check mark after three seconds. And then we're going to refresh the page. Update the UI. And that should be all we have to do. If I can get a drum roll, please. OK. All right, so let's get our code to copy again. I may see if I can add a scroll bar to that component, but I don't know if I can or not because it's really just a input box. All right, then click Format. Oh, wait a minute. Our checkbox is visible, and that's not really what we want because we haven't copied it yet. So we're going to make our checkbox hidden by default. So go into the constructor of our index page. If I can. Okay. Close the event. We need a constructor. So the easiest way for me to add a constructor is just say public index. And then I'm going to click regionizer format document. And then notice it just says create a new instance of that needs to be an index object, but good enough for prime time. And now we're going to say check mark, check visibility equals hidden default to invisible all right so this the drummer is not going to give us two drum rolls so i'll just go with it all right so formatting our code again copy go to our web page and just to show you nothing up my sleeve it's not formatted click format now it's all formatted you can scroll down just to, if you don't, I'll just copy this to our clipboard. Uh-oh. Now you're going to notice we just got an error. And this is going to say, could not find that. And I'll tell you why. Because we copied, let me go look at something. Blazor.js functions. Hmm. Okay, now I'm confused. Because this was working. Hang on. Uh, we got nine minutes. We're not going to give up yet. What is different from the old project? I think that's needed. Um, let me go look at the code for the copy. Blazor.js bridge dot copy to clipboard. copy method blazer js functions which should be copy text okay I'm getting I must be getting tired because this just worked like earlier. <laughs> okay, well, if I can't do it, I guess I'll do it tomorrow, but I'm very confused. Why does it work over here? 
I know I'm going to find this out in a second and go, damn, I forgot that. Um, let me make sure those are in the same spot. I'm at a loss. I'm going to try this one more time, and if it doesn't work, go to bed. And I'll probably do it in five minutes in the morning. All right, pasting in our code. Oh, that's going to be all formatted code because we've already done this once, but it doesn't matter. Now, that time it worked. No, wait. I'm make sure I'm not running the old one. Oh, it is. That's running the old one. So see, that one works. I don't understand how one can work. Same code, same bat time, format. Could not find. Oh, I know why. I know why we solved it. Yay. We don't have to make another video. Okay. In the host.page I just realized what it is and there's even a blank spot here it's like okay so go to this project over here stop let me go to the host page here we need to register the Java the blazer JS interrupt script so okay pasting that and now we're gonna find this is our new project so it's gonna work so we did it in five minutes, even though, and I'll even go over here and get the unformatted code. And just to go up to the top and show you, because we got 27 seconds. Format code, one, two, three, ta-da! Okay, so that was my demo of datajuggler.blazer.component. Sorry it didn't go very smooth, but I was getting kind of tired. I ran 12 miles, or 11.9 miles this morning, so I'm kind of tired by now. So anyway, uh, that's my video. Let me know if you have any questions or video requests. Thanks for watching.